Hi everybody and welcome to Holiday Salute. I'm Mike Gooding. For 34 years now, we here at 13 News Now have been bringing you this program where we endeavor to honor the men and women of the military and all the great organizations here in Hampton Roads which support them. Anchors Philip Townsend and Nicole Livis will be along in just a little bit to help us spread the cheer, but we're going to begin over at Newport News Shipbuilding, where that company is about to deliver perhaps the greatest Christmas gift of all to the country, the nation's next nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the future USS John F. Kennedy. Welcome to Holiday Salute, a tribute to our armed forces. The 100,000-ton ship is about three months ahead of schedule and, once complete, will serve the country for 50 years. Former first daughter Caroline Kennedy was on hand for the big christening ceremony earlier this month, just as she was in 1968 for the original USS John F. Kennedy. Over 5,000 people have been involved in the construction of the ship since the keel was laid back in 2015. The 24,000 shipyard employees are justifiably proud, especially the ones who have been here for a while. Cliff Edwards is a deck machinery supervisor for the new Kennedy, but when he was a kid, he got a ride on the first Kennedy. It, it was it was incredible. I was actually in um, Navy Junior ROTC in York High School. Back then, I never dreamed that I would be working on the future John F. Kennedy. I do remember being excited about it because I really hated to see him decommission uh, CV-67, and I'm. You know, I always thought, you know, I, I can't wait for the next one to come out. Never thought it would be in my career. Shipyard finance manager Mark Prevett served aboard the old Kennedy as a member of the F-14 Tomcat Squadron VF-14 from 1985 to 1988. He is thrilled the Kennedy name will now live on. That was awesome, actually. Um, I was sad when I was working here when they decommissioned the other one and they announced that. So that, that was kind of a, a sad day, um, but definitely um, very happy that they um, have brought back the name. The $11.4 billion Kennedy will be the second in the Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carriers. As has been well documented, the Ford has had its share of challenges, most recently with non-working weapons elevators. Navy leaders remain confident in the Ford class and convinced lessons are being learned from the Ford and being applied to the JFK. So I think that as we work out some of the kinks on, uh, on the first in class, we're going to see the consecutive follow-ons that will be uh, able to overcome a lot of those challenges very quickly. Huntington Ingalls Newport News shipbuilding executives are banking on the lessons learned from the Ford experience paying dividends with the Kennedy and the Enterprise and the still unnamed CVN 81 after it. Our build process has become more refined. We learn more and more every day as we build the second ship and then what will be the third and fourth ship of the class. And we said in order to build a ship 18% cheaper, you got to build it different. So we started off at the very beginning looking at everything we do from how we buy material to how we engineer to how we test on the ship. And we looked at everything we do and figured out how can we do that uh, more efficiently, how can we do that cheaper. We, we were just relentless. This year we wanted to take a look back in time to the stories that made Holiday Salute what it is today, back when it was called Navy Christmas. So for that, we had to bring in one person in particular. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Joe Flanagan. Wait, wait, this came in. This just in, Santa Claus has arrived. He's here. Joe Flanagan, you guys know him, former 13 News Now anchor reporter. Now, Joe, you were there from the beginning, 1986. That's when the Navy Christmas, as it was called, started, right? Yes, absolutely, Philip. And uh, we got to credit Hal Brower okay. as the salesman here at Channel 13. I had never been out of the country. All of a sudden, I got a passport. I'm in Naples go fly out to the John F. Kennedy carrier and the USS Saipan, only there for about seven days, but we put the whole hour together and I was hooked. I wanted to be a part of that for as long as we aired it. And you got to you know, help Santa out a little bit, right? Well, we had started that in 86 too. I was helping Santa in 86 and, and we did it again in 89 and, and started this nice tradition that, that Santa was bringing gifts for the ready room aviators from okay. their wives back here in Hampton Roads. All right. A hoot. A <laughs> always got good laughs. All right, let's take a look. Six ships were on our agenda in the Med. The Trenton, the Saginaw, the El Paso, Iwo Jima, Portland, and the USS Donald B. Berry in Haifa, Israel. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, and we heard the officers' wives club of VAW 122 
on board the Forestall had talked Santa Claus into delivering some early gifts to their husbands. So we boarded the Forestall in Naples. What I brought, guys, are some gifts from the wives. Yeah. Hey! There were model airplanes to unwrap, like the ones these E-2C squadron flyers fly, special drinking mugs for those special occasions, and gifts for daddy from home. That, that must be from my son. <laughs> thank you, Wendy, and thank you, John. <laughs> Santa had a real good time with these guys, and he was more than happy to sit down with some of them and wish a happy holiday to the folks back home in Hampton Roads. Joe Flanagan, 13 News, Naples. Merry Christmas to all our troops of PNR Christmas Street. From HCC 28 to Drown Wealth. Happy Holidays, Hampton Roads! This didn't come as any surprise. It's a regularly scheduled deployment, but that doesn't make it any easier for the more than 50 members of Norfolk based HSC 28. It comes right at Christmas, and that's just not great. Yeah, you're, you're going to miss the family and, you know, you're talking, to, talking to them, trying to keep in touch with them, but, you know, we kind of knew what we were signing up for uh, doing this job. Because you still have to do to do a job. You celebrate, but it's, it's another day. So it's, it's new, it's, it's bittersweet. It's gonna be fun for me, but I'm a little bit worried about the family back home. For squadron members, the responsibilities are great. Yeah, so we have 13 uh, main missions that we can do. Uh, a lot of stuff that we train to and practice to, we most likely won't get ca called to do. We'll be out there for search and rescue. We'll also be out there for ship's defense, uh, defense of the amphibious task force. I mean, this is what I've been training for for the last four years and went to school for four years before that, so it's exciting to finally get out there and do get to do it. And as hard as it is to be away for the holidays, team members are excited about this chance to serve their country. Going on the boat for the first time, uh, being an aviation ordnance man is pretty cool. I mean, you get to do all the, with all the guns and bombs and stuff like that. It's great. It's a, a good feeling to be able to go out, do something for your country. And like I said, this is why we serve and this is our job. It's exciting to see the rest of the world and make an impact and make an impact with, for our country. Let's take another look back into the Holiday Salute Vault. Mike Gooding knows a thing or two about it. He's been involved in the special for more than 20 years. Well, Joe, the United States now has two aircraft carriers operating here in the Persian Gulf for the first time since Operation Desert Storm. Now, you came on board in 1997, right, Mike? I got very lucky. I <laughs> couldn't wait. I've been watching Joe and all the great work he and his team have been doing through those years. And then finally, I became the military reporter, yep. so it made sense for me to become involved with it. And so, yeah, I've been, I've been with it now 22 years. Yeah. In 97, yeah. big trip, too, for you, over in Europe. Yeah, it was. And we just hopped all around. We started in Sicily. We, we, we ended up over in Spain. We kind of made it up as we went. We, we, we'd go one place, and we'd get what we could get there. And then literally, we just worked the phones. Next thing you know, we're flying across the Med to someplace else. Uh, money was kind of no object. We just bought <laughs> tickets, and off we went. And of course, you brought the leather jacket, which you're about to see, and the stash that we all miss. <laughs> yes, uh, some things are best left forgotten, but I guess oh. we're not going to forget them now. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at that one. Who says deployments are all bad? Every once in a while, you hit a pretty decent liberty port, like Naples in central Italy, the Italian Republic's third largest city with a population of 1.2 million people. Besides a storied history that dates back to the days of Julius Caesar and stretches through the Renaissance to the dark days of fascism, Mussolini, and World War II, Naples also enjoys some of this region of the world's most diverse architecture. And in one small, tucked away section of the city, they do Christmas like nobody's business. They call this part of town the Church of San Gregorio Armino, a centuries-old marketplace in the heart of old Naples. Americans might know it better, though, as Christmas Alley. If you can't get the holiday spirit here, you can't get it anywhere. 52 weeks a year, Naples artists and craftsmen bring their Christmas wares here. On this particular night, it's cold and rainy, and the merchants aren't especially enthusiastic. 
Bo, non troppo bene, non troppo bene. At the beginning is not, uh, very, not very well because many people uh, go here giorni. and uh, arrive and look but uh, few people buy something. We caught up with the military kids rep for the comfort crew and had a surprise for the group's COO. She thought we were going to do a FaceTime interview for the holiday salute special, but 13 News Now and the Tegna Foundation had something else up our sleeve. Hi. Hello, Angela. I have a wonderful surprise, a wonderful Christmas gift for you today. Yay! 13 News Now and the Tegna Foundation is delighted to announce that the Comfort Crew for Military Kids Hampton Roads Comfort Kids Program has been selected to a community grant in the amount of $10,000. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. <laughs> what wonderful news. I, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate it and oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. You know, we, we're a small organization so we do rely a lot on um, folks there on the ground, like Christy, so working with military kids every day and um, just our, our, our sponsors and donors and volunteers, we really couldn't do it without, without everyone. And, and now, obviously, that includes you guys. Thank you so much. Awesome. Maybe this will encourage others to jump in and help that, too. Absolutely. Thank you. Christy McAnally, yes. Comfort Crew for Military Kids. You're a council member. You've, you're the boots on the ground here in Hampton Roads for this organization. What is the organization all about? What does it mean? I mean, the name is perfect, Comfort Crew. Well, it, with military children, they go through so many challenges, whether it's moving to a new school, a new city, uh, deployment, separations from their families, the reintegration times. And so the Comfort Crew provides um, different resources to support military children, uh, not just in Hampton Roads, but also all over the world. Well, we shared the news that uh, Tegna Foundation has you know, granted you all $10,000 to go towards uh, what you do here, helping others. How is that gonna help you, and, and it, particularly at this time of the year during the holidays? Why is it so important? Well, during the holidays, especially when military families have a loved one that's on deployment, um, that's a hard time for military families this time of year. Um, and of course, having this type of wonderful, um, generous gift will help us supply more deployment kits and other resources that uh, we can supply to military families free of charge. So Comfort Crew, you know, th this organization helps kids like you where, you know, a parent is gone for a while and whether you have to go to a new school and transition, tell me, how has it helped? And I love these bears. If you want to talk about your kids first, what you got from them. Um, you get a little bear, um, some post-it card or some letters, like a notebook, a notebook, a movie. You think it helps to write some notes about how you're feeling maybe and you can share with your dads? Tell me about that. Yeah, I think it helps um, get things off someone's mind and tell them and release all the stuff that they had in their head right on paper. You guys are in a special group where you can kind of lean on each other. Yeah. And then you have this organization and your kit. What's better than this, right? You get your comfort crew deployment kit and it says, with you all the way, dealing with deployment. You think that sums it up pretty nicely? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> One of the themes of these stories from way back when, a lot of traveling. Joe Flanagan's got a good throwback when he visited a family from Kuwait during Desert Storm. Another big story that you worked on throughout the years with the holiday salute, Navy Christmas, right. a family in Kuwait that you kept up with. We were so excited about this one, Philip. Uh, we had gone over to Bahrain during Desert Shield. The war happened and Desert uh, Storm exploded. We met the family, stayed in touch for the whole year, and were able to get back to their house in Kuwait City and interview them and to hear them appreciate local Hampton Roads sailors and Marines for literally knocking on doors in their neighborhood to make sure everybody was safe. It was a very rewarding story. Yeah, it's a good one. Let's take a look at it. They were staying with relatives in Manama, Bahrain, witnesses to and victims of the Iraqi invasion in Kuwait, their homeland. Their worst fears were realized last month when they learned one of their cousins was hanged 
and their others were in Iraqi prisons. Today, the oldest daughter felt secure enough to tell me her name for the first time and talk to me about her feelings of returning now to Kuwait. Well, you see, before I was very sad, and now I'm very, very happy because my land is back, and this is thanks to, to the Americans, you know. Uh, it's definitely uh, extreme happiness, joy, and uh, we're mixed with pain as well. Fatan al Badr introduced us to the family and is a Kuwaiti citizen herself. Uh, the, the Iraqi soldiers kissing the f uh, feet and kissing hands. And Do you think that this would bring us happiness? It doesn't at all. Mm. Because if it tells us anything, it tells us what Saddam Hussein did to the part of the Arabs. Grateful for liberating their country, our newfound Kuwaiti friends had a final wish for military families here in Hampton Roads. And I hope for everybody's the families, the re reunion, and that their husbands, brothers, sons, uh, to go back to them safe and sound. Thank you very much. And proud as well. Proud as well. It's not what you get, but what you give. That's what the holidays are truly all about. And it so happens that's what Troopster is all about, too. For the fourth year, the nonprofit organization assembled care packages for the troops, in this case, the sailors of the USS Abraham Lincoln. Volunteers packed and sent more than 1,000 packages to the Lincoln crew in hopes of making Christmas a little brighter for them. More than two dozen local businesses collected more than 15,000 non-perishable snack items, cards, letters, toys, and other contents to send in support of the Lincoln sailors. Care packages mean such a great deal to the service members who are receiving them. I mean, not only is it just the feeling of Christmas at sea, but these packs are actually going out for the holidays. So it's just such a fantastic time of the year to especially get a little bit more from home. Troopster was founded by Navy veteran Chelsea Mandelo. The origins of Troopster is that I was actually in the Navy. I served for seven years and it was during my time on deployment that I realized the need for care packages. Even though a lot of these items are just little toys and knickknacks, these items really mean a great deal to those who are deployed, especially who are deployed at Christmas time. Gosh, it's just awesome. It's the most amazing feeling to have all these people, all these volunteers, strangers to show up to help pack boxes for the troops. Absolutely amazing. So far, the group has sent more than 7,000 care packages to troops since launching on Thanksgiving Day back in 2015. In a few short years, this endeavor has become the gift that just keeps on giving. Okay, let's wrap up our holiday salute throwbacks with a trip to Africa for Mike Gooding. Djibouti, I believe. Yeah. The was, stash is still there. The stash is still there. <laughs> it was this, this guy, Pierre Simmons, who was one yep. of the photographers Dr. on the staff yeah. here. He was so excited about going to Africa. This was all about spreading goodwill. Uh, this was all about America making a presence in that part of the world uh, so that maybe uh, future generations would think a little more kindly upon America. And the, the best thing for me in this trip was we went around to a lot of orphanages and a lot of schools and a lot of hospitals with the troops and they were painting and they were uh, uh, the, the walls and they were doing repairs. I got to teach a class uh, with some kids. Uh, I was trying to teach them English as a second language. And the only thing I could wow. think to do was a Beatles song, All You Need Is Love. And so I wrote the words up on the board uh, and then we kind of went through it and we kept singing it until I thought that they understood what, what the words meant. That's great. Yeah, That's great. it was awesome. Wow. It, was, it was the greatest moment ever. Mm. Well, let's take a look at it. Back in 2007. Back in Africa, the people are so poor when the U.S. military hands out even a few donations like these from generous Hampton Roads residents, small scenes of chaos can spontaneously erupt. One package can turn uh, 10 kids into uh, 
a, a mob trying to grab that one little bit. Chaplain of the Air Force Major General Charles Baldwin traveled to the Seventh Day Adventist Clinic outside a refugee camp outside downtown Djibouti City. Those children will never, they may not even know we're Americans, but it doesn't matter. They are people who came here to help. The people who run these clinics and orphanages and schools here in Djibouti say it would be hard, if not impossible, to do what needs to be done without the help of the U.S. military. At nearby St. Mary's Orphanage, Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa troops show up three times a week. Basically, the, uh, the folks from the camp just come out and uh, help with the feeding, play with the kids, spend time with them. That's a uh, big help. At the Horsehead School in the Balala district of Djibouti, every Monday night the Americans come to teach African school children how to speak conversational English. They even let me do my part. I left them with the best lesson I could think of. What a great opportunity it is to be of service uh, when we have uh, time off from our mission for projects such as this. We are very, very happy for, for giving us uh, a hand to the students. The idea, though, is not simply to give a hand out, but a hand up to people in need. Chaplain Baldwin says it's an important American legacy that could pay dividends in the ongoing war on terror. And that's the whole idea. We go in and make the world a better place. We don't leave landmines, we leave food and clothes. Here's another unexpected surprise for an amazing organization called Military Child Education Coalition. We know that your program is very important to you and it's also important to our community. The military, I mean, that's what makes up Hampton Roads and 13 News Now and Tegna Foundation. We know that you all applied for a grant and you, you asked for $10,000, but we've got $15,000 for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we just want to let you know. We know it. That's really going to go a long up. way. Here's a little certificate to let you know what we have for you. Well, we have funding for student to student at the elementary level. In Norfolk, we really need student to student funding at the junior high and the high school Aww. level. So this is going to make a big impact on the community. Tell me about some of the reactions when you're able to help a family. Oh, the children are excited. How did you know my name? How did you know I was here? Did my mom or dad tell you I was here? So the children are excited. They like that TLC. Um, the parents are grateful that I'm here to advocate for their ch children. Sometimes there's some transition issues where they they need to get school records from another school, so I'm able to step in and help in that way. There's times where their families have special needs children mm -hmm. and they need resources outside of the district, mm -hmm. and so they've let me know that they really appreciate me being able to fill in those gaps and make sure to point them in the right direction where they can get that help. Student ambassadors are students who represent our school and welcome any child into our building, military connected or not. Um, when their parents are registering them in the office, it sometimes takes a while to do all the paperwork and the child's just sitting there. So our ambassador will come up to the office, introduce themselves, and take them on a tour of the school. Nice. Try to alleviate some of their fears as far as where's the bathroom at, where's the gym, where am I going to be at recess. Important questions. Important questions. And the ambassadors are also trained to ask open-ended questions. So as they're walking and showing the new student um, different areas in our building, they're also asking them, where did you move from? What do you like to do? Tell me about your family. Um, so they're kind of engaging the student and learning about them as they go, so they form a bond. So you don't have those children who are having social-emotional transition issues because they know they have friends. Well, that's so wonderful, and we, we, we're so glad that you're able to put this money to good use, and thank you for all you do. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I have to hug you again. Sure thing. <laughs> and that's going to do it for another edition of Holiday Salute. To all the men and women of our military, their families, the veterans, all the great shipyards here in Hampton Roads, everybody who plays a part, we say to you all, thank you very much, Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays.